at this point I would just like to say that people are so accustomed to uh, turning on their computers, having a hard disk boot up dozens of programs, and starting hundred megabyte photoshops. Uh, this is all well and fine for those applications, but keep in mind when we went to the moon during the Apollo space program, we would use computers such as IBM 360s and uh, they would be programmed with uh, operating systems such as CPM which could fit on a floppy 6,000 bytes long and running Fortran compilers so you know you don't need bloatware to run a computer you can have a single floppy with your operating system and your program and a second floppy with data disks and you can uh, do massive calculations on a machine like this so this is not a toy this this was a real computer back in its day and it was a real workhorse and it still can be used in the same function today. Okay, now we've got the uh, sector read write program loaded into the uh, IMS computer. So what we will do then is uh, put our in floppy disk in that has already been formatted and this program that I wrote for uh, reading and writing sectors uh, is sitting at address 0, 0100 and there are some parameters at the beginning of the program that need to be set by hand and these parameters basically tell the program uh, how many sectors to read and, and which tracks to read them from. So let me get my program out for that. Here we go. Okay, so let's examine the first memory location. The zero, that means drive A. The next location is the zero, it's the density. When we're reading a disk, we don't really care about which density was recorded in. The DJ board is smart enough to know to uh, extract the sector information, whatever density it was recorded in. Next byte is how many bytes per sector. So, what I want, it's a two byte word, so what we need here is uh, 1024, which will be 0400. So the least significant bit has to go in first. We want a zero, zero in here. And the next byte, we want a zero, four. Let's make sure I got this right. Zero, 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 four is what should be in here. I think I used a deposit instead of deposit next. Okay, next byte is the sector size we'll set it at 26 even though there are only eight sectors on the 1024 tracks uh, uh, eight of those we're going to put it to read the first track to make sure that we get the first track zero uh, data start track will be zero and end track will be one start sector will be one and end sector will be 26 so I will put a 1a in there Next is the user memory on the computer here, where we want the data from the disk to be put. We want it at 2000, which is a nice empty spot. So that's 2000, or in programming you put the least significant byte first, so 00, 20, which already is there. And then we have some empty program variables. And then is the uh, a print counter that I put in to display how many bytes on the screen at a time. Again, I'd like to show 1024, so that would be two loops that are required, a loop that counts hex 80 down to zero, and then another loop that'll count eight times. So an eight will be deposited here. And that's it for the program variables. So now we reset the counter to the start address of the actual program, which is actually at 0120. So let's reset, make sure we start there, and we will run the program. And the disk is now being examined sector by sector. This is track zero, which has 26 sectors of 128 bytes each. These are the format characters of a fresh formatted disk.
and now we're starting track one which has a large block of 1024 1, bytes per sec there's the eight of them and that's it the disk sectors have, be, have been read now to actually see the hex data since these are ASCII characters which is not really a true representation of the binary data that has just been brought in by this uh, terminal program we'll go to MS-DOS right here first what we want is the capture file this was generated by the terminal during this session hex edit capture text there we go so here is actually the sector data and I've, been, I've coded the track numbers the sector numbers in here this is uh, sector number two see uh, the ASCII on the side, which is what you saw on the terminal screen, but this is the actual data. They're filled with, uh, between the sectors, the sectors themselves are filled with E5s. I'm actually printing 1,024 bytes, but there's only 128 bytes that are valid in the print block. And if we go to the bottom, here we have the full 1,024 bytes filled with E5. That's uh, sector 7 on track 1. Sector 6, etc. So I now have the capability to read or write any sector on any track or any group of sectors on a group of tracks. So if I can locate a copy of CPM I can read the system track, which is on track 0, from that disk and patch it for this uh, computer's uh, DJ board for the disk access and the serial port for the screen and the keyboard input for the terminal. And then I'll actually have a running copy of CPM that will boot. The boot uh, sector is on track 0, sector 1 and then the CPM system itself is read by the code bootloader on from track 1 which is the 1024 bytes per sector track and then after that I will be able to uh, run programs such as Fortran and COBOL, BASIC what have you so basically I'm setting up the operating system by hand here step by step what you see here on these videos is only a few minutes of video but this took several weeks to sort out and get a working floppy disk system for this uh, IMS 8080 computer. Thank you for watching.